Hi, my name is Jane. I'm one of the pastors here at Derby Vineyard. You might remember Storm Eunice a few weeks ago. Well, my brother and sister-in-law live in Edinburgh and during Storm Eunice, they had a huge tree fall on their house. It was at the end of their garden and my brother-in-law had been asking the council for permission to take the tree down for years. Experts had been out to see it, but they kept saying no and um, they said that it was stable. Anyway, it blew down and caused a terrible mess. Cracked the bedroom window, the dining room, the roof of the extension was all smashed in. And it reminded me of the story that we're going to read today in the Gospel of Mark when Jesus had a hole knocked through his roof. I'm just going to pray and then we'll read the passage. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would come and put power on my words and I pray that anything that is of me would fall to the ground and anything that is of you would take root and bring life. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're just going to start to read from Mark chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing him a paralysed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralysed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. The thing that we sometimes miss with this story is that this was possibly Jesus's house. It looked as though he had moved from his family home in Nazareth and into this house in Capernaum. Now, after his little tour of the surrounding villages, he's so much in demand that the crowds are thronging round his house. No one can get in. Maybe he had a wry smile on his face when that hole appeared in his roof and he said, son, your sins are forgiven. However, there's obviously a deeper meaning which the teachers of the law don't miss. They immediately accuse him of blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Only the priests in the temple in Jerusalem could declare forgiveness, not some random wandering preacher. This story is a signpost pointing to Jesus's trial in front of Caiaphas, the high priest near the end of Mark's gospel, where he is again accused of blasphemy. It's also like a potted version of the whole of Mark's gospel. There's Jesus teaching and healing people, Jesus being uh, accused of blasphemy, then Jesus being vindicated. This healing at the end of this little story of the paralysed man points forward to the huge vindication at the end of Mark's gospel, the resurrection of Jesus, and then the new life that he'll share with anyone who wants it. The key sentence in this passage, though, is the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Son of man could mean I or someone like me, but it's used over and over in Mark. And it, um, it's from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. In Daniel chapter seven, Daniel describes a vision where he sees one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven, who is given all authority and all peoples and nations will worship him. Jesus often describes himself as the son of man. 
When you read this passage in Daniel, it's clear that he's hinting at the fact that he is the Messiah, the chosen one, the king of the Jews and something even more. He wouldn't have been able to say that he was the Messiah, let alone the son of God, openly or he would have been arrested and executed immediately and not able to do his kingdom work. It's interesting that he claims to have this incredible authority as son of man, but instead of using it to bring judgment, he uses it to offer forgiveness. Forgiveness is not something that's natural to us humans, and it's not valued in many cultures. In offering forgiveness instead of judgment, Jesus smashes a hole in the roof of all the cultures of this world. Forgiveness is in fact the most powerful thing in the world and also the most costly. It cost Jesus everything. John Wimber, who led the Vineyard Movement until 1997, became a Christian in a little Bible study group in California. And it was led by this man called Gunnar Payne, whose daughter was murdered. If anything happened to one of our daughters, I would want to kill the perpetrator in all kinds of nasty ways. But Gunnar publicly forgave the murderer and he became well known in the local area. He liked to go door to door telling people about Jesus. He would go to people's houses and he would say, I'm Gunnar Payne. And they would invite him in and they really wanted to listen to what he had to say because they could not understand how he had been able to do what he did. It's important to say at this point about forgiveness that forgiveness is not denial. It's not pretending that what happened was OK or what somebody did was OK. In churches, I've sometimes observed that many passionate Christians keen to obey God and to be like him and to offer forgiveness downplay the seriousness of what has happened to us. We can sometimes super spiritualize and think, oh, I'll just pray about it. The Bible doesn't tell us to be super spiritual and it doesn't tell us to pretend that things are OK. In fact, Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, go. In other words... Be real and honest and brave and go and talk to the person who did that thing that really bothered you, especially if it's getting in the way of your relationship. And don't have those conversations via phone, email, text or certainly not social media either. Real forgiveness rather than denial takes courage. It's costly. It costs Jesus everything. He said, son, your sins are forgiven to the paralytic, knowing it was going to cost him everything, knowing that he was going to pay the full price for this man's sin. Forgiveness is costly, but it's also worth it because it's the key to healing, healing for our bodies and our souls. This paralysed man seems to have been suffering from some kind of guilt and shame, from some wrong he had done, as well as a physical ailment. And it's possible the two might have even been connected. Modern medicine is discovering more and more all the time how much our bodies and minds are inextricably linked. So forgiveness, knowing you're forgiven and forgiving others is one of the keys to healing. And we're going to pray into that in a minute and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. But the last thing to say is, it would have been maybe easier, if unpleasant, for the paralysed man to stay on his stretcher, locked up in his bitterness and shame, but not having to do very much. Once he's forgiven and healed, he is propelled out of the door to share the love of God in the world. Do we have the courage to dig a hole in the roof of Jesus and receive his forgiveness and his healing today? So let's finish by praying together. I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come. Come Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. We welcome you, we love your presence. Come and give me the words to say, come and speak to us Holy Spirit. Come and do what only you can do. We love you Lord. So just while we're in this moment, um, why don't you take a minute just to ask the Holy Spirit to highlight anything which you might need forgiveness for. 
and let's um, be careful to avoid condemnation, which is a kind of general sense of unworthiness or being rubbish or beating ourselves up. But let's ask the Holy Spirit for conviction, which is always um, clear and always specific and always comes with the grace to change and to be transformed and to, to move on. So come Holy Spirit, come and show us anything that we need to ask forgiveness for today. You might like to, if, if uh, the Holy Spirit has highlighted some, something to you, um, you might like to, next time you see somebody from, uh, if you're part of the church, if you, next time you see somebody that you trust, um, you might like to talk to them about it. Just ask them to pray with, pray for you about it um, and just pray that you would have the power to change. Let's just take another moment or so to forgive um, anyone who's done wrong to us. So Holy Spirit, I, I ask that you'd come and speak to us, um, show us if there's someone that we need to forgive today. And we choose in your strength, God, to, um, to forgive that person. To give them a gift that they don't deserve. We thank you that you have forgiven us for so much. And then lastly, let's just take a moment to forgive ourselves. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So um, let's let's just pray into that. Father, I ask that you would release um, a sense of freedom, a sense of knowing that we've been forgiven. And that out of that, um, out of that love and forgiveness that you give to us, that we would be um, enabled to forgive ourselves. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to pray as well for anybody that has pain in their body and pray for physical healing right now. So I'm just going to stretch out my hand and pray for you right now if you have um, any physical health problems. Just uh, ask for your healing power to come Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Just tell pain to go in Jesus name. any health issues um, that anyone watching this has, we tell them to be healed in your name, Jesus. I had a sense there was maybe somebody with pain in their arms. I don't know what kind of pain that was. I just speak healing to those arms in Jesus' name. We tell the pain to go. And I had an impression there was maybe somebody with uh, joint pain of some kind. And we tell that pain to go as well in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anything different that we haven't covered today that you need prayer for, please um, please feel free to message us. We would love to pray for you. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.